Good morning all. Another dual battery charger. In fact, it's another Parkside dual battery charger. The other one was 12 volt. This one is for the 20 volt batteries or 18 volt, whatever you like to call it. So, should we take a look? Oh, uh, the sticker is still on there. I haven't cut that yet. And this thing is quite big because these 20 volt batteries are physically fairly large. I wonder if this one's got fans like that other one had. So first things first, let's plug it into the mains. We can actually see how many uh, watts it's drawing with all these, oh, six LEDs. These aren't buttons, are they? No, just LEDs. Uh, that says 1.7 watts. Right, I'll get a couple of batteries. Right, I have a 4 amp hour uh, 20 volt battery. Now that's showing all three lights, as is the 2 amp hour 20 volt. That's also showing all three lights, although the green light is quite dim, so maybe that one is a little less charged. And just in case I do have charged battery syndrome, uh, where of course the charger won't do anything, I've got, uh, well, this is some sort of uh, volume air pump to discharge these things a bit. Okay, let's try the two amp hour on that side. Well, I can't hear any fans. We've got this three stage charge indicator, which is quite nice. And we're drawing, ooh, I need to get that so it's visible. Um, well, it's about 82, 83, 84 watts. It's bouncing around a bit. So that's the 2 amp hour. I wonder if the 4 amp hour charges at a higher rate. I'll use the same bay just in case. Now this one actually might be full. No, it's not quite full. These have been sitting around not doing anything for quite a while. And that's charging at around 100 watts. And then of course it'd be interesting to see what happens if I put them both in. How many watts are we charging at? Oh, 170 watts. Yes, I suppose that's about right. But uh, yeah, slightly over the top illumination here, but I like it. I like having six LEDs. Uh, they look like they're green only. Okay, let's start taking this thing apart. Well, there's a few interesting stats here in the manual. It says rated power consumption 200 watts. And I guess that would be if you put two of the four amp hour batteries in there, which charge at uh, well, it says 60 minutes. It doesn't actually give a current. Oh, it does say rated current 4.5 amps. Um, these times would imply that it's 4.5 amps, regardless of whether it's the big or small battery. I didn't realize they had a 3 amp hour battery. And this is interesting. They've said uh, 30 minutes to a ready to use state. So what are we thinking? 80% charge. 35 minutes to 100 percent i just unplugged this and stuck my finger straight across live and neutral um, the capacitors across directly across the mains class x capacitors will have little bleed resistors on them so it's, uh, i shouldn't get a shock by pulling this out of the mains and then sticking my finger straight across live and neutral that's how this is meant to work so the little 12 volt charger dual charger had fans in it this one doesn't appear to have fans so it runs at about 200 watts so it must have some reasonably good heat sinking in here uh, so that it doesn't need fans because i mean fans really are a point of failure uh, anything that uh, has moving parts is a point of failure okay unrehearsed taking a part of this thing oh that's simplicity itself Yes, that came apart very nice and easily. And well, we've got the usual sort of high voltage side with spark gaps uh, across the inductors. Uh, from the um, input side to the output side. What this is for is if you unplug the unit at a point where the common mode chokes are energised, you don't want them um, sort of sparking between the two sides. You want them to dissipate through something which is uh, non-destructive. So these little spark gaps there, I don't know whether they're very effective. 
Hmm, this is interesting. We've got connectors here for the little LED boards. Uh, two completely separate connectors for that, and they're in nice JSTs, which I can undo. But the connections that go to the battery connectors are soldered into the board, and then there's some white uh, gunk on there uh, to prevent flexing of the cable so they don't snap off. But it looks like there are screws on the uh, battery connector, so I might be able to undo those and lift them out of the uh, lid this is. So let's try that. So there's the just LED board, so it must be just three green LEDs on each side. And it's been mounted really very wonky, but I suppose it doesn't really matter because these uh, lamp covers are very large. So it doesn't matter that that's a bit off-center, but here is the charger. Now that's interesting, this is two completely independent charger circuits, even to the extent that mains goes in here on the mains cable, and then a separate piece of uh, mains cable routes out to the other charger. So they've just put two charger circuits on one PCB, absolute duplicates of each other. Okay, so as I say, these are identical. So you've got the same set of components on each one. There are no common components at all. So each circuit has its own uh, fuse. These are, oh, is that 3.15 amps? I think it is. And also an NTC thermistor, which is used as an inrush current limiter. Now this one is a 2.5 D11. And I'm pretty sure the 2.5 refers to ohms when cold. So that's what allows the uh, low current to flow through the circuit into the big capacitor. It's this big capacitor which is drawing all that initial inrush current. This having a 2.5 ohm resistance makes that a slower process. As this warms up, then it goes to something near zero ohms. It's almost like a wire short. Um, but of course, by that time, the capacitor is mostly charged and the inrush event is over. Now, there is a two winding choke here on a toroid. Uh, it's got four um, pads, if you like, four wires coming out of it. So is that a common mode choke? And why is it different from these common mode chokes? And why are there two? So it's really interesting because we've got um, a two winding choke here, which look like completely separate uh, isolated windings. Class X capacitor, which is directly across the mains, has its discharge resistors. Then we go into a common mode choke, another Class X capacitor, and then another common mode choke. Uh, the second Class X capacitor also has its discharge resistors and then we go to that device which is a bridge rectifier so that's interesting two common mode chokes two class x capacitors now we saw in a previous power supply that we had capacitor inductor capacitor which is kind of a pi filter it's a low pass filter uh, to block high frequency energy transients um, from passing well in both directions but this is kind of not even pi, it's almost like a square. So it's capacitor across the mains at both these points and a duct inductor in series with um, live and in series with neutral. Uh, that's live at the bottom, isn't it? In series with live and in series with neutral. So as I say, this is not quite a pi filter. We've got capacitor across the mains, incoming mains here, and then an inductor, and an inductor on this side as well, and these are linked, I suppose I ought to draw some lines. Another capacitor, and then inductors again. So it's a complex filter, but it's clearly high par, uh, low pass, so that high frequencies are taken out by the capacitors, also taken out by the series inductors, but quite an extensive uh, low pass filter there. And as I say, if this little toroidal uh, transformer there is also a common mode choke, then you've got inductors here. And then, oh, I haven't got room to draw it, but in one of these arms, you've got the fuse. And in the other one, you've got the NTC thermistor. Uh, the thermistor is in neutral, the fuse is in live. And then over this end, of course, we've got the diode bridge where AC is turned into DC but with lots of ripple. 
Uh, that ripple, of course, is taken out by the large high voltage capacitor, which in this case is 68 microfarads, 400 volts. So that's a pretty extensive uh, mains filter network, which is good to see on a budget charger like this. I think this was, um, I think it was 20 pounds, 1999. Then of course, once you've got a high voltage DC, we've got a big transistor. Oh, there are two. Now, are they both transistors or is one a diode? I suppose we can have a look. Yeah, that's Q1, so that's a transistor, might be a MOSFET. That's D5 which I suppose comes after the four diodes in the bridge rectifier. Uh, so yes, that's a diode. We've got the class Y capacitors down here, probably in series again, linking the uh, low voltage side to the high voltage side. And uh, yeah, they're simply slung in series. That's the midpoint there. And then this is the uh, low voltage side, which comes into all the sort of clever electronics for the lithium charging profile and then this of course is the high voltage side it does have um a fair few components here because of course you've got a a chopper you've got a circuit which is oscillating which is <laughs> taking the now dc after it goes in the big capacitor turning it back into a sort of ac waveform so that it can hop across the transformer so here is the isolation area between high voltage side of the uh, switching transformer and low voltage side you've also got these two capacitors which uh, link high voltage to low voltage and then for feedback there is an opto isolator which is sitting here which goes from the low voltage side feeding back a signal to the high voltage side to keep the whole thing regulated so on the low voltage uh, dc side we've got a controller chip lgt 8p 22a and of course that's duplicated over here, there are a couple of MOSFETs as well here, possibly doing end of charge cutoff uh, to completely cut off the uh, battery once uh, it's reached a certain voltage. They're linked together here, source to drain. So they're in a bi-directional uh, arrangement there. Oh no, they're not actually. These are reversed with respect to each other. So they're actually in a source to source configuration. I assume this is, I assume the three pins is source. Actually, I might look that up. And the four pins connected together are drain. And then the single pin on its own, of course, is the gate. So this 4485 MOSFET is a P channel MOSFET. And by putting them source to source, which is this middle point, it means that the two body diodes are facing each other. So when the gates are turned off, and I do believe the gates are connected together uh, here, then this double device can't conduct in either direction. So it's totally isolated. Turn the two uh, MOSFETs on with a suitable gate voltage and it will conduct in both directions. So it's, it's just like an on off switch. Now diodes in parallel, this was always frowned upon but it's very common now, and this is the footprint of a TO220 um, diode. And of course, it's a diode pair. And you can see that the outer two connections are simply paralleled. So they've paralleled two diodes here. Now, is that a problem? This is the one, the big TO220 uh, diode marked D5. Well, I've just read an article on parallel diodes. And what they're basically saying is, yes, there could be an imbalance. Um, the forward voltage is the biggest problem with that imbalance and what you should really do is make sure that um, the maximum stress of each diode is within the total um, of the circuit. In other words, what you're really providing here is a lot of overhead, but you really need to make sure that each individual diode can carry the current um, that you've actually put two diodes in parallel to carry you can't guarantee that they will share the current equally. In fact, they won't. And therefore you can't really run them at their, at their maximum rating and use paralleling to get more current. Not really a thing. So I think for a budget dual charger, 20 pounds for the dual charger, I guess because this is absolutely just two chargers in a box, that's 10 pounds each. Is that a budget charger? Yeah, I think that's pretty reasonable. Um, yeah, I think this has got all the stuff you'd expect and a lot of um, EMC filtering on the main side. I think that's P1, 
particularly impressive. And I'm really liking these low price Lidl and Aldi, Parkside and Ferex uh, power tools. I mean, they may not be suitable for a tradesman who's using them day in, day out, but for occasional use, which suits the DIYer, I think they're excellent and the prices are really good. And my probably misplaced brand loyalty to Ryobi, which I've had for a while, is definitely starting to wane with these uh, lower price tools. So that was a quick look inside the uh, Parkside PDSLG 20A1 dual quick battery charger. Cheerio.